Hi there, Sugar Snaps. If you want to naturally dye Easter eggs, I have a bundle dyeing technique to share with you that will create a model design on your eggs, something interesting, unique, and uses, using natural materials. So let's get started with that now. I will be blowing the contents of these eggs out through holes that I'll put into the egg. You can hard boil the eggs, but I wouldn't suggest eating them after you dye with the products that I'll be using later um, because they're not good for eating. So to do that, I have two eggs to demonstrate with, a towel, a empty bowl, a bowl with water in it, some Castile soap, and a tack or you could also use a sewing pin. So to um, remove the contents of an egg, take the one end, you're gonna put a hole on either end, take one end and gently create a hole in the egg with your tack and then extend out the size of that hole so that it is about an eighth of an inch in diameter. So there's my hole on one end. Now I'll flip it over, put your finger over the hole, flip it over and carefully put a hole on the other end. Okay, so that's a little bit bigger of a hole here. So now I'm going to wipe off one end to blow through so that the egg is wiped off. Wipe off the end of the egg so that there's no egg residue on the outside. And then you're going to hold it over your bowl and blow through the hole so that the contents comes out the bottom. And you can see the egg is already starting to um, drip through the bottom. So blow over the top of it like that and the egg squirts out the bottom. And when the egg is all empty, blow out the excess and now stick it in the bowl of water and put some Castile soap in. And this is warm water that I'm using here. And wash the outside of the egg and allow the egg to fill up a little bit. Shake that so that you're getting the remainder of the contents of the egg. That into the bowl of water. Okay, and then go ahead and dry that off on your towel. That is how to blow your egg out so that you can decorate it and use it as an ornament, um, something that you can use over and over again. Okay, I have a couple of things I'm going to use for bundle dyeing. I wanna share those with you. I have collected yellow onion skins, matter root, which is the root of a plant. This you can get um, online at natural dyeing stores. It creates a beautiful red color. So I like um, experimenting with this for egg dyeing. Um, I'll put links in the description below for all of the materials that I use that you can buy online. Others you'll just collect from the grocery store or from your kitchen scraps after you're done, like the onion skins. I also have some coarsely crushed coffee beans. So these are cho uh, chopped up very coarsely so that they're large pieces. And then a pouch of hibiscus flowers. And you can also use hibiscus tea bags if you would, um, that you open and you can sprinkle the hibiscus tea bag contents onto your egg. So I'll go through each of these and show you how to bundle dye with each of them. So the tools and materials you will need for bundle dyeing are some sort of hot plate or stove top that you can heat a pot of water to create a steam bath for the bundle dyeing. So here I'm using a hot plate. You want a couple pieces of parchment paper to work on. I have a Ziploc bag 
and a hammer for breaking up the pieces of whatever it is I'm bundle dyeing with. Um, your, your blown eggs, uh, the number of eggs you want to dye. I have a towel, some pieces of cheesecloth. These are double layers, so it's two, it's a, it's a piece of cheesecloth fold, folded in half, and it's a width and a length that I could set the egg in and roll it up and have room to close off the ends with rubber bands. So you want cheesecloth, um, a bowl, white vinegar, and a pot. My pot has two inches of water in the bottom, and then I have this stand set into the pot to create a stand that I'll set the bundles of eggs on top to create a steam table that the um, steam will then cause the dyes to transfer to the egg in a mottled texture. And then a spoon and a package of rubber bands. Okay, so let's start with the onion skins. To bundle dye with onion skins, you'll want a couple pieces, enough that will wrap around your egg. So I'll pull out a couple pieces here. That's probably good. And then your piece of parchment paper laid out in front of you and lay down a piece of the cheesecloth on your par parchment paper in front of you. Now pour some of the white vinegar into your bowl and you're going to coat your egg with the white vinegar. So roll it around in the white vinegar to get the outside of the egg wet. And this will help the dye material stick. So now I'm going to take these leaves and wrap the egg into the, our skins of the onion. Wrap them up. And set it in the middle of your cheesecloth as you work. And I'm just co coating the outside of the egg with the onion skins and holding them in place until I have enough around the outside. So there I've got a pretty good bundle. I'm going to roll the cheesecloth over and around the egg. So it's a nice tight bundle. And then I'll grab some rubber bands and close off the ends. And there is your yellow onion skin bundle. We'll set this aside until we're done bundling the rest and then we'll steam it. Next up, I have coarsely ground coffee. So again, lay out a piece of the cheesecloth in front of you. Grab one of your eggs and roll it in the white vinegar. and let that sit there. Now this one, we're going to spread the coffee onto the cheesecloth because it will be harder to roll it, it onto the, or keep it on the egg. So I'm gonna roll this, run some of that down onto my cheesecloth and then take the egg and roll up the egg so that it's catching some of the coffee beans as you're rolling. And some might fall out the end, that's okay. Bundle it up like so. And if you're missing some on one of the sides, you can kind of situate the contents of the bubbles or the bundle so that it covers those gaps. And then Tie off your ends with a rubber band.
that is your coffee bundle. Now between bundles, if your parchment paper gets dirty or you need to replace it, go ahead and fold it up and set it aside or wipe it off if you want to reuse it. Next, I wanna do hibiscus petals and these are quite large and they're dry and so um, they have a lot of texture to them. They're really stiff and they won't stick to the eggs very well. So in order to make them work on the, on the outside of the egg, I'm going to put them in this Ziploc bag, close it up. I have about a palm full here and let out all the air out of the Ziploc and using your towel, create a little um, pouch that the petals can sit between. And you're going to use your hammer to hammer the petals into pieces. Okay, and once you've made smaller pieces with your hibiscus, we'll go through the same process, laying out a piece of cheesecloth. And with this one as well, we'll, we'll, sprinkle, we'll sprinkle the petals onto the um, cheesecloth and then roll the egg in it. So roll the egg in the white vinegar. and then roll them, roll it up into the petals. And for this one, it might work best to put the petals on one end of the cheesecloth and then roll up from that end so that you get petals all the way around. And there is your hibiscus bundle. Next up, I wanna show you the matter root. And matter root is a powder and it's best to wear a mask when working with it because you don't wanna inhale it. Um, or this matter root is a powder. Um, so in order to work with it, I'm going to put my mask on. And again, sprinkle this onto the surface of my cheesecloth. For this, it's going to be rather messy um, because it is a thick, uh, rough powder. And so you'll probably want to change out your parchment paper after using the matter root. Okay, so sprinkle it on like that and roll your egg in white vinegar and then roll it. This one, you can roll and pick up the matter root so that it's over the egg. Like so. And then again, roll it up to bundle it. And tie off the ends with rubber bands.
and the matter root will probably fall through the cheesecloth as you're working with it but just be gentle with it as we put it in the pot and it will be okay now that we have our bundles all created we can set them up in the seam steam bath to steam away until the dye transfers from the um, dye material to the egg so i'll set up my pot on here again i have two inches of water in the bottom of my pot in order to create the steam i'm going to turn this on to high to get it to boil and create a steam uh, chamber in in my pot and once that has begun to steam you can add the eggs onto the platform in the pot hokey dokey we have our boiling pot of water and Got a nice simmer going, got some nice steam going on in there. So I'm going to set my eggs onto the platform in here. And you wanna set them in so that they don't touch. They're separated so that the dyes don't cross, contaminate each other. Okay, so then put the lid back on and allow that to sit for 15 minutes. And then you'll rotate the egg and then let it sit for another 15 minutes. Okay, so let's open up this pot of steaming eggness. <laughs> and I'm going to lift out the eggs onto a towel. <clears throat> set them on, oops, set them out on the towel. And these are hot, so just be careful when you bring them out. Um, and we'll let them cool on the towel until they're cool enough to handle. And then we can open them up. Okay, so these are still pretty warm, but I can handle them. So I'm going to open them up. I'm gonna flip this out so that I have more work surface. Okay, so to do this, I'm gonna take off the rubber bands from one end and then the other end, and then lay it down on the towel and unroll it. And there's the hibiscus egg. The hibiscus makes sort of a blue-gray, sometimes pink. And you'll want this to um, dry slightly and then rinse off any of the excess petals off of the surface. Allowing it to dry first means that the color sticks to the egg better um, and gives it time to cure a little bit. So then I'll set aside my bundle. You can wash out your cheesecloth and use it again or um, put it in a compost bin or throw it away. Okay, so now the coffee one. Opening these up is fun because you never know exactly what they're gonna look like and if it worked. I haven't actually tried the coffee before, so let's see how that turned out. Ooh, that's cool. Got a nice mottled kind of speckled look here. And again, set that aside to dry slightly and then you can wash off the excess coffee grounds off of the egg okay so this is the yellow onion and we might have to peel off some of the skin off of the egg so we'll see how this works Ooh, that's cool oh look at that that got a cool cool design on there. So there's a lot of places that is that was left white on this egg and that's probably just where um, the onion skin didn't contact the egg close enough and you could uh, fix that by doing it again, steaming it again with new um, onion skins if you wanted it more fully covered or um, when you put it on the onion skins the first time, just make sure that they're in contact with the egg by wrapping it with rubber bands or with a string or just more tightly in the cheesecloth. But I like this modeled look. It looks um, different and unique. So set that one aside as well. And these onion skins you can compost or try using again. And set aside your rubber bands unless they break. If they break from the seam, go ahead and throw them away. But you can always reuse these on future projects. Okay, and the last one 
is the matter. Open that up. And this one will need the most rinsing because the matter was a powder and it's just kind of caked on there. But again, allow it to kind of brush off some of the dust and then allow it to dry before you rinse it off. And it looks like we got a nice pinky red color from the matter root. So, so allow those to dry for about 20 minutes and then go ahead and rinse them off in some cool water, not hot, cool water, um, to rinse off any of the extra vegetable matter. Allow your eggs to dry and then finish them with a clear varnish. I'll put a link in the description below to the one I'm using. Um, you'll spray spray one side and then roll it over and spray the other side until you've sprayed the entire egg and that will give them a uh, you can either choose a matte finish or a shiny finish and that will um, change the look the, f the finish of the egg and check out the video on how to create an egg tree and turn these eggs into ornaments so that you can have springtime decor from your hand dyed handcrafted eggs that's how to bundle dye Easter eggs. I hope you get a chance to experiment with this process. You can do this with flowers and leaves and cloves and cinnamon and other um, materials that you can find around your house, in the yard, at a park, or um, gather from around your area. Um, so experiment with different things. You can use the materials that I have. Check the descriptions below for um, sources for some of those. And um, yeah, experiment, because it's fun to see what comes out of the bundle once you've finished dyeing. Uh, some of the the um, some of the fascination with it is not so much the color that is produced, but just whether a color is produced at all. So I like experimenting because you can see what creates a color and what doesn't. I'd love to hear about your experience bundle dyeing. If you try something that I didn't share, I'd like to hear how that went. Leave a comment below and like this video because it helps me keep producing better and better videos. Check out my other Easter egg dyeing videos. I'll have those in the description below. I cover a couple different natural dyeing techniques and um, painting techniques for decorating Easter eggs. And also my video on how to create a Easter egg tree up here, um, where I create a tree and create ornaments out of all of the eggs to decorate that tree. See you next time. <laughs> if I put them that in the bloopers, <laughs> people are gonna be like, I don't think I'm gonna watch her anymore. She's crazy. It's true.